and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com, where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. If you'd like to support our show, please use our Amazon affiliate link below. Today, we are going to talk about spider plant care, what you need to know to have really pretty spider plants in your indoor garden. This is Lucy. You may recognize her if you've been following her revival. Originally she was a rescue and she was not doing really well and since then I have revived her and she is doing really well. She is um, going to be getting her third repotting, potting up here in uh, two or three months from now. So as you can tell, Lucy's a very pretty plant and that's the great thing about growing spider plants in your indoor garden is they are gorgeous plants. They make lovely hanging basket plants. They also really look pretty from up on high on top of bookcases and in entertainment centers, etc. They make really good centerpieces as well. I often have Lu Lucy as my centerpiece here in on my on my which is uh, on my dining room table, which is currently being used here. So to show you these plants, okay, so. Uh, also, the, the, the variegations in the leaves. I love variegated plants in general because they give so much vibrancy to an, your indoor space, so much color. Uh, so these are very architectural in terms of how they curve the, the leaves on the spider plant. And then you get the variegation of that, the creamy yellow with the border of the darker green, just really pretty plants. Okay, so how to keep these plants really doing well so they look gorgeous in your indoor garden. So first of all, lighting. You want to provide them with medium to bright indirect light. So with the bright light, you definitely want it to be indirect. They will sunburn. I have a video on what to do if you sunburn your plants and how to tell if you did. Uh, but you want to, 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 to prevent that as best as possible. So medium light, bright indirect light. If you do not have that coming from windows as a natural light source, then you will want to give spider plants some full spectrum artificial lighting. There's plenty of lighting fixtures on the market today. There's plenty of lights on the market today. So look for full spectrum lighting. I put links below for some such of uh, those types of, of products for you, okay? So no reason not to give your spider plant some really nice light. If it's not from the windows, then from, from full spectrum lighting, or maybe full spectrum lighting in the winter months when you don't have as much light, etc. So just make sure to give on the medium light side. Okay, so soil the the a lot of the, the products on the market the soil products on the market are unfortunately made of ground up bark and that is really not a good situation for most house plants so if you open up your bag of soil and it looks like ground up bark it probably is ground up bark and the problem with that ground up bark soil quote i in paren in quote marks here is that it doesn't retain water. So spider plants do like a fast draining soil. However, they need also some water retention in the soil because they also are big drinkers. So you want to look for a soil that has some additives such as peat moss or core or vermiculite as well as other soil ingredients so it retains water and also drains well. If you find that the soil you have seems heavy, you'll want to add some pumice to the soil to add some, some drainage to the soil and I have a pumice product, I'll put the link below. Okay, so there you go, a, a well draining but water retentive soil. I've also put links below for some good soils that I like. Okay. Now water, as mentioned, spider plants do like to, they are pretty big drinkers. So, however, at the same, on the same side of the coin here, you don't want to overwater them. So you want to keep the soil moist, but not soggy. And they um, do well with things like well water, potentially, uh, depending on the minerals in the well water, uh, and also rain water, snow water, um, the, <clears throat> 
and you can also use reverse osmosis water on them. Now, the reason I'm mentioning all of these things is that they are sensitive to fluoride and chlorine in the water, and I do have videos on, on, these, on what to do about that, okay? So what happens is when you're, they're watered with water that is high in fluoride, chlorine, or both, they, because they have such long, strappy leaves, they try to push those, those minerals out of their leaves, but it ends up gelling, basically congregating at the end of the leaf, and, and it doesn't get pushed out all the way, and that creates the brown leaf tips that you will find on that these plants are, tend to, to get. So that being said, if you're starting to find that you get brown leaf tips on your spider plants, then try distilled water, reverse osmosis water, uh, rain water, snow water that you warm up, etc. You always want to also water spider plants and any of your house plants with warm to tepid water as well. You could potentially use bottled water, but some bottled waters are higher in minerals than others, so you'll have to, to try that out and see how it works for you. And when you do water, uh, make sure to soak the soil well, not just a little water on top, but soak the soil well, and then wait again until it's time to water. In terms of when to water, if you use a moisture meter, you want to water the spider plant when the moisture meter reads four. So it's four is still moist, three is dry. You definitely don't want to get into the dry zone with spider plants because they will, from being too dry, will cause brown leaf tips and, and die back and things like that because they do need water. Okay, so temperature and humidity for your spider plant. Warm human conditions are ideal for spider plants. They don't like temperatures below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. This means they should be protected from drafts and air conditioning vents when grown indoors. And I have a video on that. So you might think it's a great idea to put it right under your heat vent, but it's not because that will dry out the leaves. It will also dry out the soil prematurely. So keep them away from drafty conditions, but preferably higher than 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if the humidity is too low, meaning like any lower than, say, 45%, then you can also get those brown leaf tips. So if you have, you live in an area that's low humidity and low humidity occurs in the winter months when you're heating your house and it can also occur in the summer months when you're cooling your house with air conditioning, then you can mist the plants put them on humidity or near humidity trays or on humidity trays. And also grouping plants is one of the best ways to raise the humidity in your house plant collection. So the more house plants, the better because they humidify each other. Fertilizer for this beautiful plant. So they do like a moderate amount of feeding. They're not big, big consumers of fertilizer, but they do need to be fertilized as all house plants do. So I generally will feed Lucy about every other month. I do have a, an organic houseplant fertilizer. Uh, the link is below, my Green Gourmet Houseplant Fertilizer, and that does a good job of keeping her healthy. Uh, whatever fertilizer you do choose, please choose organic organic. The chemical fertilizers will burn the roots of, of, the, of the spider plant pretty easily and that they, those, those chemical fertilizers can also cause the good old brown leaf tips because there's just too much salts in the soil that build up from those chemical fertilizers. Links below for that sort of thing too, um, those, uh, those topics. Okay, so you and when you fertilize uh, make sure to water the plant well as well prior to fertilizing and then fertilize and then water again so pruning the your spider plant remove dead or browning leaves as they appear 
If a plant is becoming too leggy and sparse, remove the plantlets, if there are any, that form at the bottom, at the bottom of the leaves. Because when you see those cute little plantlets, which can be propagated, by the way, and I am going to include how to do that in an upcoming propagation series, but those little plantlets will take energy from the main plant. So you're better off snipping them off and or rooting them and then snipping them off. Uh, so that will, then, then the plant can put more energy in creating more leaves for you. So potting and repotting spider plant. You want to grow spider plants in containers that are slightly larger than their root balls, but not too much. Ensure that the containers have ample drainage holes and use a loose potting mix as I mentioned. They will typically need repotting every two to three years, but if they're really fast growing, it could be yearly. You'll know it's time when you see roots protruding out of the drainage holes and above the soil line. The best time to repot spider plants and most house plants is in the spring. Summer, you can also repot. Gently remove the plant from its old container, container and position it at the same depth in a slightly bigger container, as mentioned. Then fill it around with fresh potting mix and water well. Okay, so as mentioned, you want to be careful with how much soil you are putting in your spider plant pot when you repot. I have a video on this. You want two thirds roots in the pot and one third soil. If you are putting your spider plant into a pot and there is a little bit of roots and a lot of soil, you're going to have a problem with root rot very quickly. So what you want to do is make sure that you have a good mix of both. As mentioned, aim for two thirds root to one third potting soil. Could go a little bit higher than one third, but not too much so that the plant isn't surrounded by a bunch of really wet soil because what you want is the plant to be moist, the soil to be moist, but not soggy because what happens when you have too much soil in there, it's like planting the, the plant in, in a lake and you will, the plant will succumb to root rot eventually, if not sooner. Okay, so uh, one more area here for growing spider plants successfully, and that is uh, any um, pests. They sometimes get spider mites. Now spider mites like things on the dry side. So if you do have spider mites, it could be that your conditions are too dry for your, for your, for your spider plant and that will show in its growth. It won't be growing in lush foliage. It'll be more spar on the sparse side. So for the spider mite, mites, rinse with water, um, keep the foliage area, the hum things on the humid side. If you're really having a hard time with the spider mites, they will also, you can also get rid of them with neem oil. And I do have a video on neem oil and how to use it as well. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And generally speaking though, they're pretty pest free, especially if they're nice and healthy and grown in a really good conditions. So there you have it for growing these gorgeous plants in your indoor garden, spider plants. If you have any questions about your spider plants or any other plants, please feel free to ask in the comments section below. I'm happy to answer. Thank you for stopping by today. Please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And please check the bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos are released.